Okay guys, welcome back to Hobson's Choice Harley. So we're working on this uh, 1972 FLH, trying to get it all torn apart. I did get the clutch basket off. I've got the nut off on the uh, front pulley. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the primary off. I do got some PV blaster in here trying to loosen this up because it's not coming off so easy. So if you notice, I'm trying to use the rubber part of my hammer here so as not to scratch up this blue primary because it's pretty. So the little drift key in here was holding us up some, and this seal was kind of on that shaft. But it looks like we got the primary out in one piece. Again, I don't know if I said this before, but kind of interesting, this is a factory primary that does not have the hole drilled for the stator or the solenoid. So I guess this is aftermarket because I'm not seeing a part number stamp. But I've got two more of these that don't have that solenoid hole in them. I'm gonna have to look at those and see what we got. Okay, so we got a socket that'll fit it now. I don't know if it'll go deep enough. I might have to reverse the arms on this and put the short arms towards the sprocket. Oh man, to have one more hand, I tell you, some days. Okay, there she's going. She's actually coming off pretty easy. That uh, PB Blaster is some amazing stuff. If you don't have some, get you some. Okay, so there's the uh, belt drive. So I have a complete belt drive for a kickstart only shovel head tapered shaft. Uh, that probably will go on the auction block or for sale block if anyone's interested. Uh, so good, gaining, gaining. I guess I'm gonna try and uh, get that shifter arm off so that we can get to that transmission, brake line, rear end, front end, trying to get this all the way down to just the frame of the motor today. There we go. There's that shifter. And this one's cool because it has that like quadruple bend. This is an aftermarket shifter, but a lot of these shifter arms, if you buy them off of the, the big box stores, they only have one bend here instead of one, two, three, four bends and you'll end up hitting here, will rub there, and you'd be amazed how much frustration that can cause you on setting up your shifter linkage. I had one I fought with and fought with, and the curvature of them is totally different, which makes all the difference in the world. You know, it doesn't take much rub right here on your case to make that whole shifter drum not wanna do what it's supposed to do. And it's not the end of the world. You can take a, the other style one and just heat it up with the torch and bend Give yourself a little wobble around that. The thing with it is that most of that aftermarket stuff so pretty and chrome that you don't want to do that and booger that up because you're going to see it right here over the primary where that arm comes in. So little stuff I've learned along the way, passing it on. Maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. That actually has the O-ring on there. I'm surprised. Usually that O-ring is not there. Nice, and that case is in good shape. Generator shovel and the 70 and 71 and 72 shovels have this juice brake bracket. And sometimes finding the juice line and the fittings to put all this together, not the easiest to find. There's a lot of ways to make them work with different fittings and stuff. I've seen a lot of guys that just run a rubber line through and down. But to have all these steel bins that go up and under the transmission and around to the front master cylinder, it's nice to have all that stock stuff. That line right there with that big threaded and the washer and nut getting harder and harder to find. Even if the rubber line is toast, you can take these fittings down to any local brake shop and they can put new rubber on there for you. I've had some of the aftermarket brake lines for these style bikes work perfectly. And I've had some that were nowhere even in the ballpark of fitting. So there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Welcome to Hobson's Choice Harley's guys. We're uh, still working on the 72. Wanted to show off, I got our logo on my hat. Got logo on the t-shirts. If anybody's interested in a shirt, let me know. I ordered quite a few. Like to get that logo out there for anybody who's interested. Goal for the day is to have this thing down to just motor and frame. Hoping to get this transmission out, the whole rear end out, as well as the front end off. Just trying to get all these transmission bolts loose. So we're right now we're removing the transmission and the chain. And once we get that off, I'm gonna remove this rear fender, which is a very cool strutless fender. 
So I'm going to get that removed and then we're going to take this jack and put it down low and get this thing out of the air. And we're going to pull this rear swing arm with the back wheel, the brakes, everything all in one shot is the plan and leave that rear end all together. And then while it's down, we're going to take the nuts off of here and drop this whole front end out. Same thing, trying to leave it as one piece and just drag it out from under there. So I think by getting that bracket out, that should have freed up this brake line that's been fighting me a little bit. I've got one bolt here that I've got my wrench stuck on. There we go. Somewhere I've got to find the master link on that chain so I can pull that chain apart. It's always the last bolt that fights you. So this one's almost loose, but I can't get a socket or anything on it because it's so far up that the head is giving me a little bit of fit. So let's see if I can get it from an angle here. Come on, Bolt. Come on, Bolt. Good to the last thread. Boy, it's going to fight me all the way up. There we go. Okay, so the tranny's loose in there now, as you can see. Now what I got to do is get that chain off. And then I can pull the transmission out. And then she's really going to start looking naked from there. So let's see if we can find master link, master link. There it is. Right there is your master link. And it's no different than a bicycle master link. There. All right. Let's, oop. And it's funny, I don't know. I had a guy laugh at me not too long ago. He saw my keychain. All my bike keys, I've got different keychains with my house key and stuff on for different bikes. And I've got a master link on all of them. And the guy was like, what the heck is that? He didn't realize because most all your bikes nowadays are belt. But that's old school. I've carried a, a master link on my keychain forever. Because if anything's going to fail on the road, it's that master link. So having a spare master link is a good thing. Didn't realize that this is an O-ring chain. So it's got little rubber O-rings through everything. Everything. They fell apart when I took this off. Uh, there's one. So they've got rubber O-rings. So there's one of those on every post, this side and this side at every link. So there's a bazillion of those. Everyone says they're a much better product. I'm, I don't know. I've got a couple bikes with them and most of my bikes without them just because I don't see the benefit or the money exchange. And you got to watch your width clearance. So you can see down inside there, there's O-rings on both sides. If you're too wide, it can cause issues with clearance on stuff. So I don't know, most of my stuff is 82 and older. Actually, most of my stuff is 80 and older. I typically just run a solid diamond chain. I don't run an O-ring chain, but to each their own. So let's see if that transmission's ready to come out that direction now. I did leave it on the plate. So let's see if I can get her to there and then hold her. Typically, I take the kicker off, but what's typical about anything, right? Okay, so there we are. That's a beautiful ratchet top transmission, and it's a 66. No, it's a 65. So if you look right here, it's a 1965. So that's uh, the first no, 66. I'll have to look. I'll have to clean that up. So that's the first. 64 was the first year they came out with these wings for electric start. So that's the case number. Um, this does have the medium shaft. So this is, I think 64 was one shaft and then 65 through 69 was one shaft and then 72 and up was a different shaft. But anyway, this is a stock 72 shaft and probably the case was stock. I don't know when they changed the number on the cases. All right, so there's that brake line that I've been playing with. <laughs> And like I talked about earlier, to find that brake line with all of those bins, it will meander its way under the transmission and mount where it needs to mount, has the brake light switch and the forward tie to your master cylinder. You can find aftermarket, but they don't fit right. It's that steel line that's tough to get. A lot of people will just run newer rubber lines, which is fine. It's kind of cool to have stock parts whenever you can. So I save anything that's stock starting to look less and less like a motorcycle, which is kind of, on this project, that's what we're shooting for today. Get her all torn down. We're gonna try and get this strutless fender out of here without making too big a mess, and these shocks. So, I think what I'm gonna do is move some of these tools out of the way, and we're gonna lower this thing down, because what happens is gravity will fight you. Once I pull these bolts to get these shocks off, this whole arm, swing arm here, is gonna try and drop. So I want her closer to the ground before we do that. Drop this lift down a little bit right there. Okay, so we're going to, so now we're just working on getting these shock bolts apart. 
So I haven't done any measuring, but I got to find a set of shocks for the survey car. And I've got dozens of different shovel head and sportster shocks. So I'm hoping one of these style shocks that I've got will fit. My concern or what I've been told, which is probably true, is they're probably too long. So I have to measure those other shocks that are on the survey car. But I guarantee you those shocks on the survey car are blown. I can just grab them by hand and extend them and compress them. I know that they're not a viable shock. Okay guys, there you go, using a crescent wrench. Never supposed to use a crescent wrench. And yet, sometimes you do. And we're hoping, I'm trying not to bug my painting guy too much, but I'm hoping to have Soft Tail Sally's paint back this coming week. That'd sure be nice. Okay, so this is the part where it gets a little wonky because of the no weight on that back end. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this down. Oh. I'm going to let it right there where it's still on the stand, but not far from the ground. Okay. There's one shock absorber. There we go. So we got our shocks off. This is a nice set of shocks. So we'll get them in our save pile, which our save pile is getting big. So that's a three quarter. And typically on these shovel heads, there's a nut back here. So these are a different length. They have a different spacer because they go right into this fender, which has the struts built into it. The structure of the fender doesn't need struts. It's a cool fender, but it might make things a little awkward for disassembly, especially when I'm trying to save the paint job. If I get this out of the way. Yeah, see, so I got that out and it looks like a stock. I'll have to measure this against a stock one to see. Maybe it is a stock and the fender was built for a stock set of struts or a stock set of shock bolts. Either which way, I want to save those, make sure I've got the right hardware to install this fender on another machine. Boy, that sucker is in there. Now, probably what we've got is some Loctite in here, which I only use Loctite in very minimal situations, and I don't use the red hardly ever. And again, this one, the old trick Loctite is to get it red hot, but I don't want to put heat anywhere because it'll travel down that bolt to that paint and spider and shatter that paint. Everything else is connected. Oh, these aren't too bad. What I don't know is... Are they threaded or is it a bolt? No, no thread or no nuts on the back. So all this stuff is threaded on the fender, which is a cool deal. What I got to be careful for is this fender doesn't go clunk down inside there and beat up the paint. Good to the last bolt. Here we go, guys. So I've got my right hand behind it, holding that fender as well as my leg back here. Just trying to keep a little tension on that fender. And when things get loose, I will drop the ratchet versus the fender. Oh, she's so close. Okay, so if you look down inside there, there's your structural struts that hold this thing together, built into the fender. And I don't know if this was a aftermarket purchase or if this was homemade, built, either which way, it's a really cool fender. So we're going to put that in our pile of stuff over here, which if you look at our pile of stuff, there's almost a whole bike there, some assembly required. So basically I got to pull this swing arm bolt, which is going to allow this whole rear end to come apart, which is really nice with the juice brake setup, the round swing arm, the invader wheel. This is a, gonna look beautiful on some bike. I'm just not sure which bike that is yet. So we got the bike down lower to the ground. We're going to go ahead and pull this swing arm off. So I'd mentioned before, this was a project somebody really loved and was in the process of building, which makes tearing it apart a whole lot easier because it's not, everything's not greasy grimy rusty beat into place it's actually in pretty good shape so we're gonna save that swing arm bolt or axle i guess you would call it just so this is a complete unit ready to molt to another bike might not look like much just a wheel and a piece of the frame but boy there's a lot of weight there so like i was saying hardtail is he's gonna put a 
rigid frame piece on here. I'm not sure what all they cut. I think they actually cut it here and here and somewhere in here. This is your tranny frame mount. So I'm not sure different kits get cut different ways, but most of this disappears and this will just be a solid frame, rigid chopper style setup, which to me is a very cool look. Okay, so we're gonna take those bars off. So this is a really cool aftermarket front end. Anybody looking for a front end, if you look over there, I've got six or seven, seven or eight. Got a lot of different front ends, single disc, dual disc. Most of them are all narrow glide. The one on the far left that's leaning against the parts washer is a narrow glide width, but the tubes are 40 millimeters. So that's kind of a cool billet aftermarket front end and it looks like it's got dual disc legs on it but those legs are just sitting on it you could put whatever legs you want so if anyone's interested in any of those let me know and i've got lots of different configurations for uh, lower legs calipers all right so we're going to pull that off of there what we've got to figure out here is we've got our pinch bolts here we got to pull these off take this off and basically take this top tree off and then slide the neck out from under this bike. Sometimes these grab, sometimes they don't. Depends on the style. Some of them are just there to bolt blinkers and different bracketry on them. So we're gonna make sure they're loose just to be safe. I honestly don't know if there's even fluids in these tubes or not. I always keep them vertical just in case. Yeah, so those aren't grabbing anything. Still gonna loosen this one, just it's not touching that tube. Okay, that's what I gotta be careful is I don't knock this thing off the, the stand. Yeah, they weren't on there very tight. It's a good thing when you're disassembling. All right, come on. There we go. Nice and clean. It's a good thing. So we're going to not dump this bike off the engine lift. Get these out of the way. I never noticed that. These are oblong or oval. They're not round. The stock ones are round. These ones are oval. It's kind of a cool set of risers, little two inch pullback riser. We got to find out what's going to fit that. And we've also got a pinch bolt here. I just don't think I've got that one, which might bite us in the butt here, guys. Well, that one probably do it. And then we're going to try our smaller deal. And we're going to see, do we got enough air in here to get one bolt off? All right, there was the other socket I was looking for, but whatever. We're gonna loosen this and then hopefully be able to slide these tubes right out from underneath it and keep them together with that whole bottom section of the tree. So let's see what is this one. There she goes. So you can see the split there. This is basically a pinch bolt, so it pinches around that neck. So you shouldn't have to take it out, but I usually do, just to make sure there's no tension on that joint. Okay, so if we did that right, we should be able to knock this front tree top tree off and then there's a nut underneath there we take off and the whole bottom should pull out of here so let's find a little convincer for that top tree just trying to take it nice and easy i don't know if you can tell but i do have this piece of metal but i'm just tapping i'm hardly giving any pressure and i'm going left and right left and right working together to not bind anything up or beat anything up there we go so there's your top tree off we're going to keep all these tree pieces together okay okay guys so we're all loose and what we're going to do is i'm going to have my camera guy flex on the other side a little bit push down on that end go ahead can you there we go a little more if you got it and let down on it How's our balance point? We're good. There's one front end. There's that PM caliper I was telling you I was so proud of. This is a cool front end. I'll probably stick this on something that I'm going to keep. So I'm going to put that bearing back on there. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to put all these other loose odds and ends parts back on here. Just so we can keep everything together. 
and I just need a a thread or two. I'm not worried about anything but keeping it clean and even more important than that is just to keep all the parts together. Oops, as he throws the top bolt away. We can get a couple of these on here. And then I've got these rubber boots here. And where's this front end going? Okay. So I guess we'll set this here. So I showed you that other cool swing arm I had, the round one. There's an identical one right there that's chrome. So that's a chrome swing arm. That's 1964 to 1972, kind of a limited piece in chrome. Anybody's wanting a round chrome swing arm with chain guard, let me know. And I think if we set this right there. Okay, nothing like being organized, right? Okay, so we're going to just wipe some of the majors out of here. Please come back and watch us again. Thanks. Bye. All right, you guys made it to the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please kickstart that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered. And I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.